Hi, I'm Chris Ochthaus, and in this post we're going to look at data brushing in ClickSense. Data brushing is a concept of selecting a value or a group of values and highlighting them using colour across all corresponding visualisations. Now, where this comes particularly useful is if you've got tens, twenty, hundreds of items or uh, values within a particular field and you want to see where it compares against different metrics. So here I've picked out four different metrics. As I start making my selections, I get down to the lowest level, which in this case is item, and I'm interested in good imported beer. As I select that value, what you'll notice is all the other items disappear. Now I've got no benchmark, I've got no comparison where I can see how well good imported beer is done against all the other items uh, within this particular application. If I want to do it without data brushing, I'd have to remove the item selection and then just manually go across and compare where that lies within each of those different metrics. Now, that's okay, but it's more time consuming and it's going to reduce the efficiency of your analysis. Using data brushing, on the other hand, a user can intuitively select the value or a group of values and instantly see where they lie within the um, at the item level or whatever field that you choose to use and effectively just improve efficiency. It, it saves them time, it's, it's more um, intuitive. Now to apply data brushing, we need to do a few things. Firstly, we need to apply some set analysis. So if we go to our original dashboard, we need to make it so all the other items st are still present even though we've got uh, a selected by item in that particular field. So if we go to our metrics, we can open this up and we can ignore the item field. So I'm just going to use some set modifiers, apply that across all the corresponding visualizations as well. So now we've done that, we can see all our field values present, even though we've got a selected value within that given field. Next, we need to apply the conditional colour logic to highlight this selected value. Uh, to do that I generally use a variable. So in here I've created a variable which I've just called the product selections and that uses the get field selections function to generate a list of values. Now to get our common separated string literals you'll then need to wrap it um, in apostrophes. Now to do that in click you'll need to use a char 39. Once that's evaluated, you can see then it generates our list. If I set multiple values, it will still work and it uses commas uh, to separate that list. So now we have a list of our current selections generated. Um, we just need to create one more variable. So here you can see I've got my B product selections uh, within my variable list. And it's worth noting that you do require the equal sign that will just calculate it at a global level as opposed to doing it per visualization because that current selections is never gonna change from one visualization to the next. We then need to create an additional variable and this is gonna calculate um, or evaluate the color condition. So based on the value within the visualization, should we highlight it or should we not? Now to do this, um, I've used an, a couple of this statements. So I've just said, if get selected, get selected count is greater than zero, then color it, highlight it. Otherwise, just highlight it the default color. And I'm using parameterized variable here. So when I invoke the variable, I will pass it three values based on the RGB value I want it to be in its default state. So if it's selected, highlight it. Otherwise, color it whatever the default color is gonna be. And we'll touch on that again when we apply this variable um, to the visualization. So then if it has got selections in the, um, the lowest level, so in the item level in this case, we'll go to a next, uh, a nested if statement. So if, and then we perform a match. So if the max item, so the current item within the visualization matches our B product selections, then color it whatever color you want. In this case, I highlight it green. Otherwise highlight it gray. And these are the RGB values for clicks green and clicks dark gray, excluded values. Um, so that's it in a nutshell. If you need a copy of this code, it is present within the blog post that corresponds to this particular post. 
And next we're going to apply this to the visualization. So for each of these um, different metrics, we need to go under the appearance, color, and we'll need to color by expression. Now I've already pasted the condition in there because obviously we're, I'm passing in three parameters and these are the RGB codes I want it to be by default. So all you have to do is use the dollar brackets and then using another set of brackets, passing the parameterized variables. And that will just replace that dollar one, dollar two, dollar three with the first, second and third value that you pass in. In doing that, you can then see that we have highlighted each of the different metrics using our conditional coloring. And here, because I've got two line items selected, it's highlighting two values. If I go back to just looking at good imported beer, it's only highlighting that single uh, value and coloring the others in that dark gray. So that's data brushing. If you'd like to see anything else, please follow us on Twitter uh, and LinkedIn. Otherwise, I'll show you more next time.